And I've got a question up there, is shooting on automatic okay? It's a, a vexing question amongst the photography community. Now, I tend to live in the camp that yes, it is. It is okay if you take a little bit of control. You don't have to take full control of your camera. Some people will call me a heretic for that. And they will say that you have to take manual control all the time or you're not a proper photographer. I think the technology since this camera, which is a full manual camera, is so different between that one and this one, why wouldn't you use that technology? You've got a very clever computer in these things that does an awesome job of helping you to take better pictures. The most important part of any photograph is the composition, and we'll go into that in a later session. So. I would encourage you to use the technology. I don't live on full auto myself. I live on um, aperture priority usually, which means I'm setting, and we'll talk about this properly in another session, but we're, I'm setting the depth of the image to be what I want. But what I am gonna show you now is a little tip. So I went down to the beach the other day and I also went out to the local airport. I wanna show you what taking a little bit of control means. And I'm gonna use the Google camera app on the phone. This also works on the iPhone camera app, it's slightly different in that one, but it's very similar. So in the next screen, you're gonna see some really short videos and we've got a very late comer. Um, I'm gonna see some really short videos. In those videos, when I tap on the screen, you'll see a little circle appear where I tapped. And what I want you to look at is as these videos play, is what's happening to the image when I'm selecting a place. So each time I tap, I'm selecting the thing that I'm interested in effectively. So we'll just advance off the next screen and just watch this image happen. Hopefully it will play. There we go. So it's telling me to take a panorama, but I don't want to. So I've just tapped on the rocks in the left of the image. You notice how the whole image brightened up? Then tapping on the ocean water, we get much richer colors because the ocean water is white there. Tapping on the cliffs, we get lots of brightness. The sky is starting to burn and then tapping in the sky, everything else darkens up. So you get quite dark in that foreground in those rocks. We've got another person coming in. So I've got a couple more of those that I'll show you, but in each of those things, what I did when I tapped on the screen is I told the camera app the thing that I was most interested in having properly exposed and in focus. So in the Google camera app, both things happen when you tap. Now, there's another thing that you can see on that image there. Um, across the middle of the screen, you can see a, a white bar with a zero above it. That's a, a very handy level meter. So that tells me that my phone is actually level while I'm taking that image. Because one of the things that um, I try to be careful with, and I hope most people realize it, there's nothing weirder than looking at an horizon, whether it's in a photo that you wanna keep for your family stuff or whether it's a photo you're putting on maps, there's nothing weirder than an horizon like that when it should be flat. So if you've got sea meeting sky, it should be flat. If you've got land meeting sky, it should be flat depending on the terrain. So that cliff's actually not quite flat, even though the level meter says zero, um, because that cliff actually is on a slope, which is okay. So we'll just go on to the next one. So it's the same thing again, but, uh, no, it's, this is the one I want. So now I'm just looking at the, the ocean water and the rocks at my feet, tapping on the rock and it brings that rock into focus and nice and bright. I've tapped on the sea now. So the sea's mostly white. So the phone's reacted by bringing everything else down, but that gives you some much richer colors as well. So when you're exposing for that white in the sea, it's bringing down the other things, which helps with your color reproduction. Let's go on to the next one, if it'll let me. There we go. So I'm down at the, the local airport near me. It's a tiny airport. So I just looked at the picnic table on the building up in the sky, makes the sky a lot more dramatic. And then I think I'll go over to the flags. So you kind of see what happens when you're doing that. If you start doing that with your maps photos, and it doesn't matter if you're outside 
or if you're taking food photos, the same thing applies. When you're taking a, a food photo, um, I don't have any food with me in here, but when you're taking a food photo, let's say that this was an item of food and it's sitting on a plate. If you take a normal photo, the phone's gonna guess where to focus. You might be lucky it might get the food and it might properly expose for the food, but it might not. It might expose for the plate or the table behind it or the sky behind that or whatever's happening in the background. So if you direct it, if you push it to do the right thing, you'll get a better outcome. I think there's one more of these. So this one, you'll see some really big changes in some aspects here. So tapping on the tree brings that tree up and brings it out of the shadows and then into the sky, it really changes the image. So when you go on the sky, you end up with a really dramatic image. So make sure you choose your subject from your composition, the thing that's important to you and tap on that when you're using your phone. Now the same thing works with cameras. This particular one, you actually can tap the back of the screen. A lot of cameras do let you do that these days, but the, the DSLRs and things like that tend not to have that feature because they have to send the light through the mirror when they're doing that. Um, on those ones, you need to select a focus point with your camera. I'm not gonna go into how to do that on the 10,000 different brands of camera because <laughs> we'd be here forever.